Hello everyone, and welcome, I am very pleased to say, to System Shock. This is System Shock 2016, developed by Night Dive Studios, who is a company known for basically rebooting old um, defunct IPs by buying the rights and optimizing or porting them for modern systems. They, a couple of years ago, bought the rights to System Shock and managed to get System Shock and System Shock 2 out onto Steam, GOG and some other modern platforms as well as releasing in 2015 System Shock Enhanced Edition uh, which was a slightly streamlined and optimised version of the original game. Now they have got two things uh, going on with this IP. They have licensed the rights to System Shock to Other Side Entertainment who, as I'm sure many of you guys who watch my channel will know, are currently working on Underworld Ascendant, and thank you very much for everyone who watched that video. Um, they are then going on to do System Shock 3, so that's a big deal. Now, what Night Dive themselves are doing is System Shock, which is this. This is a reboot, remake, remaster, refurbishment of the original game on Unity, for release in, I believe, end of 2017 is planned or whatever. Uh, the time that I'm recording this, the game is up for crowdfunding on Kickstarter and is doing very well, and this demo is freely available to anyone, not just backers, on Steam, on GOG, and on Humble. So, let's dive in and have a look at System Shock, because I am super excited for this. This is basically... Um, a sort of restoration of the initial scenes of System Shock in the new engine. Uh, this is pre-alpha, so it's just sort of basically a proof of concept, a placeholder thing. And yeah, super exciting stuff. Um, so you wake up in a stasis booth on Citadel Station, where Shodan has gone evil. I'm not going to explain the story of System Shock to you guys. If you don't know it, then, you know, look it up. Um, this is going to be a quick video really, I think, just sort of to see what's going on with this stuff. Take a nice pipe. And there are these animations similar to Dishonored where uh, when you pick up a new item you, you do a little <laughs> a little showcase animation. Uh, it's the same in the new Doom. They actually kind of irk me a little bit. I'm not so fond of them because it does them too much in this demo. You see, you pick up the media reader. That's like your little PDA to read emails and stuff. And it does it for every item. Hello. So we have like a PDA sort of radio logs like in Bioshock and System Shock games. Uh, we also can read audio logs, listen sorry to audio logs and read um, emails and stuff through our PDA. Uh, System Shock was the original game which did that. It's now like really common in these kind of immersive sims. It's the same in Bioshock, it's the same in System Shock 2 and um, or everything like that. Oh, uh, The modern Doom reboot for 2016 also does these pickup animations you see like this and it's like it's nice I mean the graphics on this are nice but it just seems to do it too often you know it's like he picks something up he should just put it in his pocket he doesn't need to um, twirl it round in his hands and do some little tricksy thing juggling it about like this but that's cool because it's like a cybernetic implant that he plugs into his uh, bionic things. System Shock is a very influential cyberpunk game. It led the way, paved the way for things like Deus Ex, Dead Space, um, things like that. And of course Bioshock, which was supposed to be the spiritual successor to the System Shock series, but 
never really went that way. It was always more of a shooter, whereas this is more of an RPG. Or like a horror sim kind of thing. Got a medipatch. See we have the classic inventory system here. Two weapon slots, four hotkey slots. All looking very nice. And what I love is that one, when you have the scanner, you can just hold the cursor over things and it tells you an interpretation of what they are. If it actually wants to do that. Nope, never mind. There we go, button. Tiled panelling, and you see the attention to detail is really quite nice. Uh, really looking very good, and this is a project that I'm very excited for. Here we have a surf bot. A very retro looking <laughs> little guy. Corrupted and hacked by Sh uh, Shodan's corrupt AI. So, of course, hostile. And carrying a soda can, a 10 ounce can of soda. We'll take that. These are um, like healing booths. We wake up in the medical bay of this space station. So, if we use this healing booth. Notice the health is at the top right of the screen, the red bar, and that gets recharged. The blue bar underneath is our electrical charge, which we can replenish from battery packs, from um, recharge stations and stuff like that, and that serves as sort of a supplementary stat in the sense that it's like... it's ammunition for our electrical weaponry, and it's that, and you know, it's that sort of thing. Just pick up some pieces of human here. We'll look at those. Human leg. A dismembered human leg. Wonderful stuff. So, um, this is probably the best use of Unity that I've seen so far in any game. Uh, the graphics are so great. Really nice detailed texturing. Just hugely, like, amazing attention to detail. And we've learned a lot in the short time that the Kickstarter campaign has been live about what they are going to be doing with this project in terms of making it an immersive sim um, they've got like full sort of surround sound effects coming in um, really paying attention to this thing being quite modernized I guess you could say uh, the layout the content the story is all going to be exactly how it was, um, but they are. They, it was being called System Shock Remastered, and now it's just called System Shock. They've decided they are rebooting it, or it's somewhere in between a reboot and a remaster to the point where remastered they feel would be like reductive to the quality of what they think they're making here. And uh, the pitch video on Kickstarter is absolutely superb. If you watched my Bloodstained Ritual of the Night video, then you will have heard me talking about how much I enjoyed their pitch video with Koji Garashi in a like in a castle, drinking wine and torturing people with medieval torture equipment and stuff. That was awesome. This has an amazing reconstruction of the early, uh, the like childhood of one of the Night Dive developers. Um, as a little boy playing on System Shock on an old 486 computer or something back in 1994. And it's like they're playing on the fact that he's sort of been tortured by it his whole life and he needs to get closure on this thing that's fucked him up by like making this game happen. And it's it's done, the, the sort of um, tone of it is, is really funny and, and doesn't take itself too seriously and it has a bit of showdown in there as well. What just happened there is I touched a recharge station and you see the blue re the blue um, charge bar has been refilled. That's how we would do that kind of thing. We can also pick up batteries from these serve bots and do some other things like that in order to get charged back. So, all very nice stuff happening here. Um, and yes, they've confirmed they have Terry and Eric Brosius back on doing voices. Terry Brosius was a Looking Glass developer who uh, famously did the voice of Shodan. And if you guys aren't familiar, if any of you watching aren't too familiar with the System Shock games, if you've not played them before, Shodan is the evil um, AI which basically was the main influence, certainly, for GLaDOS from the Portal games. I think I always felt that GLaDOS was like pretty awesome and pretty funny, but never quite 
it always just felt like slightly too derived from Showdown. Showdown is the original and the creepiest in my opinion and it's very nice that she's back and that her real actual voice actress is back. The code for this door is uh, smeared on the wall in blood here, 451. We literally have to press the buttons like so. And here is our first mutated former human. I love, love, love the design on these guys. Uh, slightly kind of... Well, they, they look exactly like how I interpreted them looking in the original System Shock. The sprites were always very, like, much this shape with long arms and googly eyes. Not cartoony, but stylized enough to be unique from your average zombie, and I really like that. I think that's awesome. Another guy here. Notice the cool, like, graphical glitching effect when you take damage like that, I think is really nice too. It shows that your guy is like has cybernetic implants. The, I mean, like I said, I'm not going to tell you the story of System Shock, you can find that out on your own if you don't know about it, but you're basically um, a hacker who hacks into the Trioptimum Corporation, which is like a big futuristic evil conglomerate corporation, and you uh, get caught doing it and then you get offered a job for them and you agree to be um, implanted with these like bionic implants. You get put into a medically induced coma in order to do that and when you wake up Afterwards, everything has gone really, really wrong, and you have to fight your way out of this space station, which has been corrupted by this AI. You need Group 1 clearance. Um, and so, it's a, like a classic cyberpunk story, and you're, it's really like, again, this that will be um, the main influence on Deus Ex, I would say that... Um, that, that side of it definitely influenced Deus Ex, and Deus Ex was originally developed by Arnstorm, who um, were one of the phoenixes to rise from the ashes of Looking Glass. There were several studios, including Irrational, who went on to make Bioshock. Uh, there was um, Arcane, of course, who make Dishonored now. Harvey Smith was in Looking Glass, and, and so there were all these different people who, like, I wonder what's inside. These frag grenades, I haven't worked out how to use them. I don't know if this is like a glitch in this demo and they're going to just patch it in or something, but it says if you go to um, the controls here, it says explosive is G button, right? Watch this work now and me be very, uh, have a dose of humble pie. No, I'm pressing G and it's not doing anything. Now, I thought that it might be a case of equipping these grenades. You can't equip them into a normal weapon slot, you can equip them into one of these hotkey slots, which it says in the controls are the alpha numericals, right? So I'm using I'm using those buttons and it's not working, I'm using G and it's not working. I don't know if that's just if that's intentional or if they just like that's an oversight or something. Whatever, it doesn't really matter too much. Uh, this like lighting in this room is super nice. I like how it like gives that warm glow over the character model. All very, very nice stuff, very promising. And um, so, yeah, this is very, very short. It take it took me less than ten minutes the first time, less than five minutes the second time. Uh, if you wanted to speed run it, you could probably do it in about thirty seconds or less. It's really good practice I think for Kickstarter games to have uh, a playable proof of concept so easy for all I mean so many projects on Kickstarter that end up getting canned or being just a mess and you know everyone seems to be talking about Mighty Number no. 9 being the example of that at the moment and like fair enough that game was somewhat of a disappointment would have been nice if they'd have had something playable rather than some proof of concept screenshots sorry concept art rather than screenshots which looked infinitely better than the actual game ended up looking that was one of the mo things that was uh, most instrumental in that game being disappointing so this game has launched on kickstarter with a demo to accompany it which you don't need to back the project to try um, and it's super nice it really is the graphics are fantastic um, 
one of the developers of System Shock, I can't remember who it was, it might have been Warren Spector or someone, said famously that if the graphics were updated and the rest of the game was exactly how it was, it would compete with the most complex modern games. That's absolutely true. This game was released in 1994 originally and it's so in amazingly ahead of its time. The systems and the role playing elements are so complicated, the story is really, really disturbing. What I'm doing here is I'm just pushing these little breakers in to complete this circuit down to the bottom there and that activates this elevator. Like so. Switch flipped. That's a bit of a tongue twister, isn't it? Here we have a spark beam. This is like um standard issue handgun for trioptimum personal uh trioptimum like staff and stuff. It's like a little laser pistol and uh we can use the F key to change the power usage fire mode of it, which uses up different amounts of charge and um, has different effects when we use the weapon. Um, we just picked up a medi patch as well and I've got a few of those now so I'll use one. This basically just gives you um, a little boost back on your health. When you do so, you get an amazing like el uh, electricity sort of powering up noise, which is amazing. Listen to this. Awesome. Love it. Just has a really nice, like, cyberpunk, uh, space horror kind of thing. And of course, this is very influential on things like Dead Space, uh, which really, like, brought that kind of genre back into people's consciousness again. Okay, then. Hello. These are repair bots. Quite why they decided to design them like scorpions, I will never know, but just adds to the like 1990s ness of it all. I think there is a mutant around here as well. There he is. Now, one of the cool things about this spark beam is that the way that the effect when you burn holes in people. I just think it looks like if you do a different fire mode as well I think you can there's a really like cool effect where you get these little flamelets coming off them and uh, it just gives it like this really nice tactile feeling where it's about like you really feel like you're burning holes in people by using this and it's it's pretty great uh, classic ladder problems here of course <laughs> Uh, camera relative and player relative control. Sort of fucking that up, but again, pre-alpha. Lots of time to fix that stuff. Uh, what they really need, what I feel like these games need is a toggle ladder button, like sort of like Dark Souls has, where you press a button to be on or off the ladder, and that avoids this kind of problem where the, ch the control or the direction of the player changes from being going upwards to going downwards when you are just holding down one key just because of the way that you are facing in the world and stuff. I hope that makes sense. It's, I'm not really explaining it very well, but I'm sure if you've played any game like this you will have experienced these classic ladder problems, so it seems unfair to penalise this on that basis. Nevertheless, the problems are there and I'm sure they will be addressed. Somewhere down here. Did I come from this direction? Yes, that's where I got the spark beam. Okay, somewhere there is another ladder down with another repair bot. Here he is. Ooh. You can see the little fla flare holes on it there when I um, attack it. It looks so great. He's carrying Nout. Um, so, as I say, at the time that I'm recording this, the game has is on Kickstarter. Um, the campaign started on the 28th of June 2016, so if you're watching it within 29 days of that, you can back the project, otherwise I'm sure... There you go, you see those cool burn holes. <laughs> Looks so good, that. I love it. <laughs> so badass. Um, 
yes, you can back the project if you watch this video within 29, well, 28 days of it going live. Otherwise, I'm sure there'll be uh, ways of supporting it retroactively. This is just about the end of the demo here, and here we'll hear a piece of music. And we can see the external walls of Citadel Station there, orbiting this planet. Great light flare effects, reflective glass effects. Looks awesome, man. Awesome. Um, the music, though, something we need to talk about, because the original System Shock and System Shock 2, of course, had these amazing, like, uh, techno, cyberpunk, like, 90s techno, Vangelis Blade Runner style tunes in them, uh, which did always slightly detract from the horror element in them a bit, but nevertheless are very much a part of the flavour of System Shock. And so... They seem to now be being replaced with more orchest orchestral pieces. I don't know how I feel about that, because this sounds great, and they have also said they're in talks with the Prague Philharmonic Orchestra for doing the soundtrack, and they've done loads of like amazing game soundtracks, and they're an amazing orchestra and, and all this stuff, so it's very, like... I don't know how I feel about it, I'm just going to have to wait and see. Um, the atmosphere does feel different from the other one, the original, I mean, which was quite cartoony compared to certainly System Shock 2. So we'll see, you know, how this stuff ends up. But overall, I love this project and I love that there are. Um, there seems to be a, a big resurgence in these kind of games coming out now, these looking glass style games, which, as you all know, I love. Um, of course, there's Underworld Ascendant, which I've covered. And. There is, well, it's what uh, Raphael Colantonio from Arcane, he's the founder of Arcane Studios, and he founded that company um, with, just with the sole intention of making these, what he describes as first person immersive sims, right? So, like Thief, System Shock, Bioshock, Deus Ex all that stuff and there seems to be a big resurgence in these things in recent in the last like couple of years and forthcoming in the next couple of years so I mean we've had Dishonored, we've had Deus Ex Human Revolution uh, we've had the Bioshock series all in the last few years and now like this year and next year we're, we're getting Dishonored 2 we're getting Deus Ex Mankind Divided we're getting um, the newly announced reboot of Prey by Arcane Austin um, which is going in a very System Shock direction. Uh, we're getting, of course, Underworld Ascendant next year from Other Side Entertainment, followed by System Shock 3 from that same studio. And we're even getting probably the least well-known of these would be Slayer Shock by um, Minor Key Games, who, of course, did Eldritch and Neon Struct, both of which I would describe it, it, having that immersive sim flavour to them. And, yeah, it, it's, like, super promising that this stuff people are like, you know, taking an interest in this stuff again, because for me, these are these were the most immersive and the most mind-bogglingly deep games when I was growing up. And System Shock certainly was always the scariest, or System Shock 2. I still feel like that's the scariest game ever made. I mean, maybe maybe Amnesia the Dark Descent might have taken over from that, but when I was... I first played System Shock 2 when I was about 13. I got it um... Weirdly, I got it in a game shop in Cape Town in South Africa when I was 13. And it scared the fuck out of me. I mean, holy crap. Like, the graphics are super ropey now, so it's a bit easier to deal with. But overall, like, that is still... I still think that has a, a level of scary that nothing else has quite matched. It's, like, amazingly creepy and disturbing. And um, this is looking like it's going to uh, do to the original that kind of thing. So... Very, very exciting stuff. And, yeah, that's going to basically do it for this impressions video. Thank you very much for watching it. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a like and a comment, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care, everyone, and goodbye.